Look at all this clear water. It's so clear, it's so blue, it's like... It's barely even water at all. Except, it doesn't even ripple, like, why doesn't it ripple like it does on the route south of Rustboro City, I don't even know. Hello there everybody, and welcome back to more Pokemon Emerald! So, last time... We took on the Sutopolis Gym and got ourselves the Rain Badge. So now that we have all eight badges... We are now able to go to the Pokemon League later. Yeah, it turns out that we have a lot more side stuff to do. So, in the meantime, we're going to be doing a lot of side stuff around here. And, you know, first things first, we are going to properly explore Sutopolis City. Because we haven't really done so yet. Because, well, there's been a crisis going on as well as, you know, us taking on the gym. So, you know... Better late than never. Besides, you probably want to explore Sutopolis too. So anyway, for visiting this girl at this house right here, you'll get yourself a Whalmer doll for, you know, your room, your secret base, you know. It's all good. Uh, these two. Uh, they are looking for the biggest, uh, Lotad and C dots that you're probably going to find. Um, I do not have a C-Dot, nor a Lotad, or a Lotad, but I probably imagine, uh, you getting some really good reward for bringing him, these guys, the, uh, big C-Dot and big, uh, uh, Lotad. So, yeah, I'll put that reward on screen right now if there is such a reward. And apparently this guy named Marco... Is like, hey, I got the biggest C dot than Lotad ever made. <laughs> Screw everybody else. <laughs> oh boy. He's one of those people. Listen up and I'll tell you a tale. A tale of an, of an ancient ruin in the sea somewhere. There could be treasures just waiting to be discovered down there. Sounds interesting. Ancient treasures. It would be nice if they existed, but even if they didn't, it would be so beautiful to take an underwater stroll with my Pokemon. But I'm the only one with the ability to breathe for unlimited amount of time, so, you know, it's all good. It's all good. Mount Pyre. At its peak are two orbs placed side by side. Did you know? Uh, yes, I did. Yes, two orbs side by side. I sat at them together. It is somehow soothing. Somehow it is soothing. Not that they literally almost caused the destruction of the world, like... Like, uh, a few episodes ago, no. It's just the fact that they're there sitting side by side is so soothing, I mean, come on. Why else wouldn't you, uh, look at those orbs at Mount Pyre should you want to take their... You know, speaking of which, I feel bad for the people of Zootopolis City, man. Because, like, in order to get out of here, in order to see the world, you would have to dive underwater with your Pokemon, man. Even then, how long would they have to breathe underwater for? I mean, I could probably imagine, like, us being able to breathe for a very, very long time. Because we're the main character. But for any other people, eh, I'm not really too entirely sure. Hi, what's your name? Okay, that's nice. Your name is Dots. My name is Kiri. My mommy and daddy named me so I would grow healthy and warm-hearted. That's what they wished. You can have one of these. Alright, so she gives us a couple of her berries, actually. Kiri will give you this berry, too. I really like it lots. The Ayapapa Berry. Ooh. I wonder what kind of wish is included in your name. Well, speaking of that, I haven't really mentioned the anime movies based on, you know, Pokemon Advance, but, uh... Does anyone remember the theory of May's wish in uh, Jirachi Wishmaker, which is the sixth movie? Who knows what could it be? Many of the unanswered questions in Pokemon that we'll never, ever, ever get, ever. Because that is sad. Very sad. I'm not going overboard. You're going overboard. Anyway, uh, now that I've shown off the uh, Pokemon here at least, uh, there's nothing really new to buy 
that we haven't already gotten before, but, uh, you know, it's nice. It seems as if the cave was made to keep something from getting out. Or am I just imagining things? Yeah, probably. An underwater volcano erupted and forced itself up from the depths. Its crater emerged from the sea and became filled with rainwater. That's how Sutopolis City came into being. You know, I gotta say, I, I do kind of like the idea of Sutopolis City. Like, it's a really unique city in the fact that, you know, you get some interesting lore about the ancient Pokémon. Plus the fact that it's not like any other city in the fact that it actually was formed rather than made, so... Or formed from nature rather than being man-made, so... Yeah, it's actually kind of unique in that regard, so... Yeah. Plus, uh, the remake... The remakes made Sutopolis City look fantastic. Like, there's all these little landmarks, like this big tree right here. Uh, obviously the Cave of Origin leads to, uh... What I, what I would call the core of the Hoenn region, <laughs> if I'm going to be perfectly honest. They would call it the core of Hoenn, to be honest. And, you know, Groudon's room looks much cooler. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's true. And I'm just fitting from a ruby rather than sapphire, I guess. But seriously, though, it is pretty cool. For 30 years, I've remained in Sutopolis, honing my skills. I developed a shattering TM. I bequeath it to you! For some reason... I just know somehow you'll be entrusted with this. So yeah, he gives us the TM for Brick Break. You definitely do not want to miss that because Brick Break is one of the better fighting type moves, honestly. I would, you should know because Heracleson has it. Uh, if I ever went over Brick Break, uh, it not only has plenty of power to back it up, but it also destroys Reflect and Light Screens, so yeah, that's pretty damn amazing if I do say so for myself. But uh, down here, uh, if you were playing Ruby and Sapphire, again, this is where you would find uh, Groudon and Kyogre and all that. Or, you know, the Remix, and also the Remix. And uh, kind of a shame that you can't really go back here again. Then again, in Pokemon Emerald, it's more like a story, story-driven place rather than a, rather than you know, a, a place where you can try to catch Pokemon and all that. But uh, anywho, uh, so right here and right now, um, I'm actually going to keep quiet for a bit so I can actually let you listen to uh, Sutopolis City's music because honestly, I've been listening to the song a lot and I realize it's actually pretty damn good. Have a listen. In all honesty, I really do like this song. Again, this is the only place where you can actually hear it because it is a unique theme to Sutopolis City. But, you know, it's pretty damn good. It's pretty peaceful, pretty calm, pretty collected. And totally fitting for the last city, the major city in Hoenn before we reach Evergrand Island for the finale of the main story, as it were. But uh, now... Uh, as you clearly just saw, uh, I taught Waterfall to Urza. Because, well, not only is it actually a pretty decent move for Urza to actually learn, but it's also kind of needed for... Oh, God, I totally just realized that I needed Burb for this, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Because now that we have the ability to, to use Waterfall outside of battle... Uh, if you recalled on our journey, we've seen plenty of waterfalls that we could potentially scale up. And if you've known Pokemon since technically Generation 1, because Seekin was the only Pokemon at the time to learn such a move, I guess. Um, you recall that uh, waterfall can be used to scale waterfalls. Well, obviously. So what better time to do such a thing than right now? So, I'm just going to montage around, you know, places where we can use Waterfall. 
so that we can do this. But first things first, you want to head back to Mobville City because one of the places that we can waterfall to, or we can ride the waterfalls on, it does actually require the acro bike, and I didn't switch it out, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch out the bikes. And with that, we are basically good to go. So, onward to Waterfall City, baby! Okay, Route 114. This is where our first stop is, and if you remember where this is, this is west of Far Arbor Town. So, using Waterfall right here, we can scale the waterfalls. And pretty unimpressive animation considering that Gen 2 had this sort of like spitting around effect like doo -doo, doo -doo, while I make that classic waterfall sound effect. But still, riding waterfalls is pretty exciting as it will lead us to items like that rare candy that we just got. So that's pretty damn good. Alright, Meteor Falls is our, actually our next stop. Because, well, I practiced like long before this, but turns out that we can't really necessarily go back, go over to that area quite yet. We're gonna have to wait until later, I suppose. But uh, right over here is where we can actually finally see what's beyond this waterfall right here, if I ever surfed here at all, and I probably didn't. So, once you have waterfall, you can explore a little bit more around Meteor Falls. Yeah, Meteor Falls is actually a whole lot bigger than it actually is. Um, you're going to be finding stronger Pokemon here, like, you're going to be finding Golbats here, stronger Soul Rocks, I guess. That's basically about it when it comes to pure, uh, wild Pokemon that you're going to be finding here at Meteor Falls. But over there, we got TM23, which is Iron Tail. Pretty good Steel-type move. Even if it is a little bit inaccurate, I suppose, but, you know, stuff. Either way, we got a battle up ahead, so let's bring out Pinchy here. Um, Pinchy and Heracles, and we didn't really use Pinchy in, like, the gym as a Flygon, so we might as well go ahead and use her right here and right now in this double battle right here, along with Heracles and with old couple John and Jay as our opponents. So, let's get on with this. Uh, let's go ahead and use Focus Punch on... Hariyama, and we're going to use Crunch on Medicham, since technically Medicham is also a psychic type, and of course, <laughs> trust me, I practiced, and I know for a fact that Medicham does that thing, and oh, you stick, you stick, Ugh. <laughs> you would think that he would go after the dragon, but no, apparently not, instead you have to be a dick and go after Freaking Heracles and when he's get, getting the the thing. Jeez. Also psychic. Ugh. <laughs> Alright. Brick Brick should be able to do it. I hope. Yeah! There it goes. There it goes. Now all we need to worry about is that Medicham. And uh, hopefully that Protect won't delay the inevitable any longer. And why did it target Pinchy? I don't know. And I don't care. Because Mindy Cham is gone. And dealt with. Oh my, we lost your wife. <laughs> we lost our dear wife. Young trainer, if the chance arises, will you battle us again? And yeah, there are actually trainers in Meteor Falls that you can match call, so that's pretty damn good. Uh, let's bring out... Uh, yeah. Let's bring out Urza here, actually. Why not? Why the heck not? This is where we dragon users do our training. Even a champion even visits. Now, do you see how special it is here? Not really, because, you know, the champion is just like any other person. I suppose, but... You have a cape, and you don't look like Lance, so I guess that's okay. Anyway... Uh, these are Dragon Tamers. These are the basic late, late game, uh, trainer classes that we're gonna be encountering here. Basically, in their name, they like to use Dragon-type Pokémon, like this Altaria right here. So, you would think that we would just take them out. And yes, we will. So, yeah. 
Wow. Critical hit. Damn. <laughs> That's pretty good. Pretty damn good. Oh, um, I should probably mention, um, you know that little montage at the beginning where I got those match call, uh, trainers? Or those Pokenap trainers, I suppose? Um, yes, I did act- before, uh, going up against, uh, the Sutopolis gym, I did actually fight all the trainers that were on those routes that we passed by in order to get to the Sky Pillar. So, we're gonna be going there a little bit later anyway. So, I just thought you all to know right here and right now that I did fight those trainers off-screen because they're not really required for anything, ever. So, yeah. Anyway, you want to hop down to the left right here. And you should have access to right here. Where there's actually two little things that you want to, you know, take care of. Well, first of all, you want to surf down here. Because there is a PP up. So that's all good. But if you go over surf up north further here. I don't know why I said that. Yeah, take that bat bit. Ah! Yeah, that'll show him. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's bring Pinchy off front, actually. And here we go. So, in this cave right here, this cave is very special. Because if you want to find a certain Pokemon here, along with this amazing TM, TML2 Dragon Claw, which is an amazing move for Dragon types, so we might as well teach that to Pinchy, because, you know, P Pinchy could use a better Dragon type move. Yeah? One that doesn't just paralyze like Bork Bork already has? Yeah? It's pretty good. Pretty decent. Yeah, I probably won't, you know, talk like that ever again. But I probably will. Uh, if you're looking for a certain Pokemon right here, I'm gonna look for that certain Pokemon. Again, my squad is already complete, but... Oh! Right here. So, this is Bagon. Bagon is a particularly special Pokemon, if I do say so for myself. Because, well, starting off, you would think that it could be weak. It's it's a Dragon-type Pokemon. It's probably one of the few only Dragon-types that you're going to be encountering here in this game. But, you get it to Shogun, and, you know, it's better. It could be... Why did you burn? Why did you burn? You know, it could be better. It could be a mate. It could be better or worse, you know. It's not that bad. But, get it to level 50, and you have the almighty Salamence. Yeah. Those those final evolution stats on screen are to be believed. Salamence is a absolute monster that will murder children. <laughs> so... You have access to Bagon as soon as you complete the final gym. And if you're still looking for a team member, then look no further than Bagon. Seriously. It's a long road for Dragon types. But getting to Salamence is worth it. It's very, very worth your time. Also, if this thing doesn't get in the fucking ball right now, I swear to God. <sighs> okay. I'll try it again. See, I bought 99 po Ultra Balls for a reason. Because this game hates me. Uno, dos, tres. Hey, there we go. I knew making it fall asleep with a little less feminine wiles would make it better, I suppose. Although it is small, this Pokemon is very powerful because of it, its body and is a bundle of muscles. It launches headbutts with its iron-like skull. Very, 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 very interesting. And, oh god. <laughs> I just sped up without meaning to. Oh god. <laughs> yep. <laughs> this is an emulator. I probably should have put up repels when I was done. Because I like talking like this. And yada, yada, yada. 
Okay. I'm probably gonna buy more repels after this episode, but, uh... Yeah. So, with that, I think we're basically done with Meteor Falls at this point. We will be going back here a little bit later, but trust... But, uh... I think there's actually one more thing that we can do. I'm just not entirely sure if we went into this... Oh, yeah, we had to go into this room. Or into this part, actually, so... We're gonna escape and head out to the next waterfall that we're going to be, you know, doing. Oh, it's raining on this route, actually, huh? That can happen sometimes. Uh, so, here on route, uh, something. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't remember the names of the routes here. Route 119, yeah. So, here on Route 119, there is another waterfall that we can do. Or that we can, you know, s you know, s s do something with. We're gonna travel up the waterfall, there. I said the thing that was apparently impossible for me to say. And this is what you kind of needed your Mac, Mac... Or not Mac Bike. Acro Bike for. But right over here, you get some Hondu Berries. So, yeah. Pretty good. Pretty decent. And, uh... Let's do this. And let's get this nugget. I knew what item would that what it was going to be because I practiced. Repels effect wore off. And over there is another secret base should you want to make one. And right over here is another rare candy. So very, very worth your time to scale up all these waterfalls of sorts. So pretty damn good if I do have to say so for myself. And actually, um, I'm gonna do this, you know, prematurely. But I wanna actually head out to Evergrande City right now. Well, just because, well, there, just because I wanna get, you know, the Pokemon Center that's there right here and right now, so we can easily fly back to there, so. Yeah, plus, we haven't traveled on that route yet, so that could be, you know, particularly interesting. So, yeah, we're gonna do it. Okay, so if you recognize this place, this is where uh, Team Aqua's hideout is. So, if you just travel east from here, we'll be able to go on to newer routes, newer heights, newer everythings. So, yeah. Um, there's also places where we can dive here, too. But, I don't have the time to do that right now. <laughs> yeah, I don't have necessarily have the time to do that because I'm just traveling on my merry little way to do that. But, I am going to fight these trainers because I need the experience, goddammit. The sunlight seems to be more harsh in this area. Groudon, you got some splaining to do. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, boy. All right. So prematurely, Evergrande City. And yes, you do need waterfall in order to get up here. I swear to God, they make it. They make it a requirement for every single Pokemon game to require like, well, except for Sun and Moon, because you know, plot. I swear to God, they make it a requirement, I swear to God, to have Waterfall in order to reach the freaking League in the first place. I mean, come on. I mean, I know they don't do that for Gen 5. They don't do that for... Wait, they actually do do that for Platinum. What the heck am I saying? <laughs> um, I don't think it's a requirement for... Uh, Yeah, I don't think it's a requirement for... Uh. X and Y? Maybe it's only Hoenn and Sinnoh that they do it in. Which is really weird. But anyway, um... I'm going to look for... This. Ladies and gentlemen, meet the suckiest water Pokemon ever made. Love Disk. So, Love Disk is known for only one thing. Being absolutely sucktacular at everything. I mean, looking at its stats, it's absolutely pathetic. The only known claim to fame for it is that it fuels shipping in the anime. Yeah, it fuels shipping because, you know, you have Love Disc, you know, they're basically the symbols of love. And if, if, if you ever watched the ninth Pokemon movie, the Manaphy movie, then you would know that Ash and Manaphy and were surrounded by all these things. 
in one scene where they were taking a break and they were swimming and it's Japan. But aside from its speed and swift swim ability, meaning that it doubles its speed in the rain, that's really all about there is to love disc. I mean, it can be annoying to fight given the fact that, you know, with the fact that it can learn attract is a thing, the fact that it can learn like stuff like sweet kiss or charm is a thing. It's not really good. The only saving grace, in my opinion, for Love Disc is the fact that sometimes in the wild it can carry heart scales. Yeah, that's the only useful thing that Love Disc is known for having. It is the only Pokemon to have Love Disc as a wild hold item. So, if you're going to capture a lot of Love Discs, then just make sure they have, you know, freaking heart scales. Because otherwise, if you're planning on using Love Disc for your problem, what the hell is your deal? You have so much better water types available to you right now. Heck, you can get Tentacruel at this point. <laughs> you can get freaking Tentacruel at this point by catching a Tentacruel and, and leveling it up just once. Yeah. So yeah, that's basically all I've come to do for Evergrande City. So... There are basically two parts to Evergrande City when flying to there. Speaking of which... So... You'll notice that Evergrande City counts as one big gigantic city. We're at the bottom half. But the Pokemon League is actually on the top half. That means if you ever played a Pokemon game before, then you should know what comes before the Pokemon League. But, uh... I'm just gonna leave that all up in the air for you guys, just in case you haven't even played a Pokemon game before, which... Why would you even have it? I mean, according to reports, Sun and Moon is where first-time players have ever played Pokemon, so... Yeah. <laughs> but either way, we're done exploring waterfalls. We have, you know, gotten some more useful items for our journey. We've gotten to do some more things. I think we're all good here. So, next time on Pokemon Emerald... Before doing our main thing for the video here, or at least in the next video, we're going to tackle some more trick houses before do moving on to the main thing that we're going to be doing for the video, which is to explore the lower half of the water. Meaning Route 129 and onward, I suppose. See you guys on the next time. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.